On a Friday evening, I thought I would relax with my attractive wife after a long work week on the flight line. After 22 years of marriage, the three children are living independently and independent of the home. Maybe we could get together and have a pleasant evening. David Collins is my name. After 25 years of working the garbage hours, the mild-mannered ANP mechanic is now United Airlines Day Shift Crew Chief for arrivals and departures. My wife, Judith Collins, was the charge nurse at Central Hospital Day Shift Labor and Delivery. Both of us making good money. Me, just a little more than her. Union, you know, but comfortably upper middle class. I pulled the pickup into the garage in its usual spot and closed the garage door. If we were going out nice, it would be in her Lincoln Navigator. If it was country slash western night, my F-250 was the chariot of choice. The night would be my wife's choice, wasn't it always? Either way, it didn't bother me. If mama's happy, daddy is ecstatic. I opened the mail that was sitting on the kitchen table after coming from the garage. I heard footsteps padding down the stairs and a noise emanating from upstairs. My lovely 42-year-old wife came into the living room wearing a short robe that always made me happy to see her wear. Oh, she exclaimed, you're early. I didn't expect you for another hour or so. I looked at my watch and realized I was early, but not that early. What gives? Where are we going? Well, I am going out. I don't know what you are doing. Okay, my weekend just went to shit. What do you mean you're going out? Where and with who? Her eyes strayed to the small overnight bag at the end of the couch. Uh, I have a date with William Strathmore. It's for the weekend. I'll be home Sunday night and we will talk about it. What the hell did she just say? I thought. I have to finish getting ready. She turned and raced upstairs and I heard the door slam. The hell you will, I said. My first thought was I needed reinforcements. I pulled out my cell phone and speed dialed my daughter. I was not going to be made the bad guy by, he said, she said. Hello, daddy. What's up? She answered cheerfully. I grabbed her mother's purse and emptied it onto the coffee table. I need you to get over here right away. Your mother hurt her head and she needs us. I've got to go. Daddy? Dad? I heard as I hung up. The next call was to my number one son. He got the same message with the included, call your brother and tell him to get here quick. Dad, what the? As I ended the call. Then I speed dialed her parents and said the same thing. There was equal confusion at their end and some yelling as I disconnected the call. Judith's pocketbook spilled the usual contents, credit cards, keys, a 12-pack of Trojan condoms, I had had a vasectomy, and a confirmation email from the Marriott Hotel in Kenilworth, room 703 to 710. The hell you will, I thought. At her employment, one of the pediatric surgeons was William Strathmore. Over the previous five years, I had met him multiple times at the hospital Christmas party, and he was a slimy character. The best thing I could say about him was that, although his wife was incredibly beautiful, I had the feeling that she was infatuated with him. I confiscated her credit cards and her car keys. Then I took the email and put it in my pocket. Ah, just in case. I picked up her cell phone and unlocked it. Her code was our anniversary date and the number three for our children. Security. Ha! She was still busy upstairs, so I got a hold of the emergency call list from her job and looked up the good doctor. His cell phone would not help, but his home phone might. I dialed it, and after two rings, someone answered. Oh, honey, I was waiting for your call. I don't recognize the number, though. Is everything all right? Is this Mrs. Strathmore? I asked. Yes. Who is this, please? This is David Collins. My wife is a charge nurse at the hospital where your husband works. I don't know if you remember me. Yes, Dave. As a matter of fact, I do. My husband and I were talking about you and your wife a couple of nights ago. I was expecting a call from William when you rang. What can I do for you? So your husband is not home? I asked. No, he's in Boston at a surgical conference. Is everything all right? Look, Mrs. Strathmore, I don't know how to say this, but I don't think he is. 
I just had a confrontation with my wife, and she told me she was going out on a weekend at the Marriott in Kenilworth, ending on Sunday night. What? What are you saying? I think we are both being lied to. I have an email confirmation for the rental of seven adjoining rooms on the seventh floor from today through Monday. I saved your number, Mr. Collins. Let me get back to you. I could take no more of this nonsense. Upon perusing the emergency call list, I discovered Corinne Adams, the HR. She was a good friend of my wife's, and I knew her. Her husband was someone I knew. He was a detective sergeant in the police. I called her mobile. She responded almost right away. Hello? Who is this? Corinne. This is David Collins, Judith's husband. I heard oh shit under her breath. Yes, Dave. What can I do for you? Definitely rattled. I think there are some improprieties going on between Dr. Strathmore and my wife, and I want it investigated and stopped. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't talk now. I have to go. Click. Wow, that was weird. Almost instantly, Judith's cell phone rang. On the third ring, with my stomach churning, I answered it. Without waiting for me to say anything, the caller started. Judith, he knows. He knows everything. What did you say to him? Then I shit on her parade. Not everything, Corinne, but I'm getting closer. The shrieking gasp for breath on the other end was most enlightening. Goodbye. Click. I immediately looked up her home phone and dialed it. Four rings and a man answered. Look, I don't want to upgrade my cable service. Jerry, it sounds like you're having a bad day. Who is this? Dave Collins, Judith's husband. Yeah, nothing but sales calls and spam. What's up, Dave? Uh, is Corinne at home? No, I'm babysitting this weekend. Corinne's at a team-building weekend sponsored by the hospital down in Philly. Why do you ask? I took a deep breath and told him everything I had learned and suspected. And I have a suspicion that the three of them are not the only ones engaged. On the other end, there was stillness. Do you have the same thoughts as me? I have no idea what I am thinking. However, I am aware of one thing. Even if I end up in jail tonight, she won't leave. If I learn anything, I'll let you know. Avoid making any foolish decisions. Jerry was a cop, and I could hear the wheels turning. Then Judith came down the stairs looking like a high-priced call girl, red silk sheath dress. She saw her pocketbook dumped on the table. What the hell? I have to leave here and you dumped all my stuff out. She started to pick everything up and I shouted, Oh no, you don't. You're not going anywhere. Now shut up and sit down. She quailed and said, You don't own me. I can do anything I want to. Is that a fact? Well then, so can I. How's this? She cried out. My dress! As I reached out and tore off the low neckline of her dress. Suddenly she was nearly nude, wearing an open cup bra, a French lace garter belt, and a lace top over smoky, gray-seamed stockings. No, bitch, it's not your dress. I bought it for our 25th wedding anniversary, along with most of the underwear you're almost wearing. If you're going anywhere tonight, it won't be in that dress. Then my cell phone rang. Hello? Dave Collins? This is Mary Strathmore. I'm sorry to tell you you were right. I called the police and reported the car stolen. I had bought it for him and it was registered in my name. They pulled him over about five minutes ago. He claimed that he was my husband and that he had a right to drive the car. Through a strained voice, she chuckled. They called me from the spot of the traffic stop and told me what he said, that he was my husband. I could hear him in the background when I told the cops it was impossible. My husband was in Boston. The bastard gasped and said he wanted a lawyer. I have to go down and fix the mess. He has been arrested and the car impounded. Tell your wife I'm coming for her next. We had been on speakerphone as soon as I realized who it was. Judith gasped and screamed. What did you do, David? Damn you! Right about that time, my children showed up and blew through the front door. Dad, what's going? Mom, are you fine? Said Dave Jr., number one son. My daughter Haley rushed in and went to her mother's side. Are you all right, mother? What happened to your dress? Your father ripped it. All eyes turned to me with murder in their hearts. I was not about to be cowed by this. Michael, son number two, shut the front door. What the hell, mom? What did you do? Tell them why, Judith. Go ahead. 
Why do you have a 12-pack of Trojan protection in your purse? Are you going to make water balloons or what? I don't know where they came from. They aren't mine, Judith said in an almost unhearable voice. And where were you going? A weekend of pleasure without your husband? Isn't that what you had in mind? I can do what I want to. It's my body. As soon as it came out, Judith realized what she had said in front of her children. In a more subdued voice, she said, Well, I can. Young Dave rolled his eyes and went into the kitchen for something to drink. A few minutes later, he returned with an envelope. Here, Dad. It's addressed to you. He looked at his mother with contempt on his face. Judith shrieked and came up off the couch, the remains of her dress falling to the floor. Don't read that, she yelled. Haley rushed to help her mother with her lack of modesty. Shut up, Judith, and sit back down, I said. When I opened the letter, I saw the words, My darling husband. My sister needs some help. She is taking care of her mother. I'll be spending this weekend with them and returning home on Monday night. Hugs and kisses, Judith. The children exchanged confused looks with one another. It dawned on me that she had written the note prior to her approaching me. Her delusions and fear would be her undoing. Then, as if the fates were eating popcorn and watching this show, the front doorbell rang, and before number two, son Michael, could open it, in rushed Judith's mother and father. Judith, are you all right? said her mother. Her father roared, what's going on here? Judith passed out. Hi, mom and dad. Welcome to Shitstorm Central. Your daughter just managed to destroy our marriage and probably ruin her life and career, I fumed. Her mother and my daughter were trying to revive Judith, and her father was doing a slow burn. I brought them up to date on what had transpired, and the atmosphere got colder and colder. About then, Judith came to and looked around. In hysterics, she begged her mother to help her. Help? You want help? How about we call your sister for help? You were going to help her with your mother. Maybe she can return the favor. With that, I handed her father the note and dialed her sister. As he read it, the phone rang. Hello? Is this David? Yes, Mavis, how's it going? How is mom doing? Is she all right? Oh, yes, she's doing fine. Judith is really a big help. I don't know what I would have done without her. Can I talk to her, please? I asked. Oh, well, she's busy right now. How about if I have her call you back in a little bit? Mom grabbed the phone and snarled at her other daughter. That won't be necessary, you simpering shithead. Mom! screamed her hysterical sister. Judith broke down again and tumbled to the floor. She now was almost totally naked in front of her children and her parents. Don't bother checking on my health again, Mavis. She ended the call amidst strangled screams from daughter number two. About that time, my phone rang again. Hello? I answered. David, this is Jerry. He sounded like I felt. You were right. I got a search warrant for the seven rooms at the Marriott. We raided them based on the missing person warrant I had sworn out and found 12 other individuals, including my wife, three male doctors, four female doctors, four female nurses, and one other female HR team member. And my wife. I'm sorry, Dave. Really sorry. So am I, Jerry. But it is what it is. Thank you. I turned to my soon-to-be ex-wife. Get upstairs and put some decent clothes on. Then get out of my house. She dragged her sniveling ass to a standing position and turned to go upstairs. She stopped, said, Please don't throw me away like this. Oh, you mean like you threw our marriage away with your It's my body, I'll do what I want BS. I have been tempted like you wouldn't believe. I could have slept with the little waitress at the diner where we used to have coffee after the night shift. I could have had the woman at the Lincoln dealership where we bought the car. Hell, your own sister even came on to me. But I was in love with you, witch, and this is the thanks I get. Get out of my life. She totally lost it and turned and fled upstairs, losing one high-heeled shoe in the trip. Silence ensued in the living room. Then my daughter said, I'll go make sure she doesn't do anything stupid, Daddy. Otherwise, I won't be able to be disappointed with her for the rest of my life. She came downstairs about 30 minutes later with a suitcase dressed in jeans and a sweatshirt. 
Her makeup and hair were a disaster. My oldest son stopped her on her way out. Mom, don't worry. I'll work with Adrienne to arrange the wedding around one of your men. Not that an invitation will reach you. Dad may bring a new girlfriend, perhaps. I'm sorry. We had no idea how serious Adrienne's relationship with Dave was. Thus far, Judith had stopped at the front door and lost it. Her mother ushered her out. Anyway, past all this, she obviously needs some help, but it doesn't seem like anything happened. She can talk to my lawyer about it. Remember, son, she loves you. I looked him square in the eye and said, funny way of showing it. The funny thing was that they all threw the same shit out, consenting adults, not doing anything wrong until they got caught. Then it came to light that the good doctor had used a company, hospital credit card, to rent the rooms and pay for the booze and food for the weekend party. The hospital tried to dodge the publicity, but eight of the participants were listed as being on the clock or at some bogus official seminar or hospital function. When this came to light, several marriages exploded. This was not the first party, but it sure was going to be the last. I filed for divorce, but I'm basically a mild-mannered aircraft mechanic. Remember? And I loved her more than my luggage, as the movie line goes. So I let it drag while she went to counseling. The kids were there for me and thought that at least I was making an effort. But it hurt so much, and it just came out of the blue. How could I have been so blind? United Airlines was very sympathetic, and I got extended medical leave. She lost her job along with everyone else involved. The good doctor was let go and then sued and prosecuted. Corinne lost her job, as did her number two. A severe nursing shortage occurred, and several doctor's positions opened up. My wife was the last recruited member of the adult club, as they were looking for some fresh meat. She had been noticed for quite a while, and Corinne worked on her, saying she owed it to herself. That it was a lot of fun, I would never know. And besides, lots of husbands got off on their wives screwing other men. It took six months, but they finally convinced her. Epilogue It took more than a year, but I loved her and couldn't live without her. The old, would you be better with her in your life or out of it? I still watched her like a hawk. I constantly bombarded her with questions as to whether we were all right or not. When she spoke, I listened to her, to everything she said. It got so that it was driving her crazy. But between her therapist, her parents, and our children, she knew that I was making a supreme effort, and she loved me, God, but I believed her. I sued the hospital and Dr. Strathmore. I had to get in line behind his wife's divorce suit, but I was ahead of the other aggrieved parties between the two of us. We cleaned him out. I took my settlement and divided it equally amongst the remaining husbands and wives. The hospital was not so lucky. We, my kids and I, settled out of court for six figures in a sealed settlement. The rest of the plaintiffs got a total of seven figures in sealed reparations. My sister-in-law was not welcome anywhere. I don't know if her parents talked to her yet. I was lucky with the outcome, the way it all came out. The fact that my mind hit on all eight cylinders during the whole incident and the support of my kids and my friends I didn't think I had taken my marriage for granted, but maybe I did. Not anymore. It has taken more than a year, but we're back. And the intimacy is fantastic. Occasionally she sobs in post-coital bliss and apologizes for all the trauma she caused. But it's getting better. And like I said, I love her. But don't think I'm a wuss. About eight months into the shitstorm, I brace the doctor coming out of a gym he attends. I beat the living dog shit out of him, breaking three, count him three fingers, and crushing one of his balls. His good looks no longer exist. Lucky for me, I was in the company of a police officer at the time. Ha ha ha. Thus, life continues. He ought to have earned a living, I told him. Perhaps he could have fought harder. Yes, it's pretty trashy, I know. Difficult. I'll be mild-mannered, so don't mess with my wife.